What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So you've got a trailer with electric brakes and they don't work or you're not happy with the way they're working or you've worked on them and they still don't work right. Uh, hopefully this video here will help you do a little troubleshooting and understand them a little bit better and get them working right. We're going to do a little bit of an upgrade here. This will probably cost you around a hundred dollars to do what I'm about to show. Uh, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, depending on if you have to buy a soldering gun or not to do this. If you already got that sort of stuff or what exactly you have to buy. But uh, you want to start out at the back of your uh, the back of your truck, the plug on your truck, and you need to test the voltage. It takes two people to do this or you can take a rubber band or something and pull the lever over on your brake controller and uh, tie it to something or a bungee cord or, or whatever you got but you don't need to leave it in the own position for a long period of time uh, I got a uh, Prodigy P3 controller and it'll actually go into overload mode uh, if you leave it on very long but you gotta do that and you have to test it with the trailer hooked up and find out what your voltage is to the brakes I'm gonna show you this right here if you have one of these plugs here that come apart like this one, you just unscrew this uh, screw here and the little screw that's here and slide it apart, you can actually plug this in like that right there and test with the uh, trailer plugged up that way and test your uh, your brake wire and uh, to ground there and find out what your voltage is on it. So anyway. Uh, I've got a voltage drop on the truck. I'm only getting 10 and a half volts on the truck, uh, but I'm only getting eight to the axles. So that's what we're going to address today. But uh, anyway, this plug here, you do have to make sure that when you slide this back, that you look at your pins and make sure because with this disconnected, this can be connected in more than one way. Uh, so you got to make sure that you have it in the appropriate pins and push it in because it'll go in any way so don't just stick it in there and, and think you know like you got this on so pay close attention to that and make sure that your colors uh no not necessarily colors because a lot of times these trailers aren't aren't uh, wired up the colors that you think they might be but make sure when you pull it apart that uh your groove here lines up with there and uh, where your screw holes at and just make sure where well, you can get that back in there right but if you got a second person and you can pull this apart like this and you got a, uh, a test meter voltmeter here uh, it makes it really easy you get somebody you tell them to uh, pull your lever on your brake controller all the way over you test right here test your voltage that'll tell you what your voltage drop is on your truck and then you want to do the same thing back there at the trailer axles and then you can make the decision whether you want to do the trailer or the truck or you want to do both. Uh, two things that make electric brakes work, you need a, well three things I think. You need a good surface for the magnet to ride on. The shoes need to be adjusted appropriately. And uh, well they need to be burnished in if you've just worked on them. Uh, it takes them they got to get a little heat in them and get wore in for that magnet surface to get wore into the drum and the shoes to get worn into the drum before they're going to grab right. And they have to have the proper voltage going to it. As I say, I only have eight volts going to mine, but I'm getting 10 and a half at the truck here. Now it should be getting 12 at the truck, but I'm showing 12.8 on my controller in there when I turn it on. So I've got a voltage drop on the truck. You can upgrade the wire on the truck. But I have two different trucks I'm going to pull with, so I don't know what the other one is, so I'm not going to upgrade the wire on this truck just yet. But we are going to upgrade the wire on the trailer, because if I can get the 10 and a half volts that I got at this truck to the axles, that would be a lot better than 8 volts that I got at the axles. So here's the wire and everything, what I'm doing. <clears throat> the factory wired this trailer with 14 gauge wire and with these little wire taps, this came off the lighting circuit. I cut it out because it didn't make connection, but I wanted to show this. They have these on the, uh, the brake wire as well. And these things are just absolutely horrible in my opinion. They got this one little blade here and you stick it over the wire and stick the other one and you press it together with pliers and it's supposed to be just lovely. And the LED uh, marker light wouldn't even work, clearance light wouldn't even work. You wiggle it 
and uh, it go, goes out, and, and they're just horrible. They get corrosion in them, and they're just junk, in my opinion. So I just want to show you that. Don't know why that's even allowed to be used. But the way they run the wiring on this trailer, it comes down in your seven-way harness right here, right below the, uh, the axles, or above the axles, and then they put a drop down, and it's right up under here. I can't really show you up under there uh, real good. But, and they just tapped it so it's, you really can't cut them out because they didn't leave any slack in the cable. Uh, but anyway, it's only 14 gauge cable anyway. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna upgrade this to 10 gauge wire right here. This is the uh, 10 gauge electric brake wire. And the only place that I've found to buy this, uh, by the foot, is at eTrailer.com. And uh, you can order it type in how many feet you need you need to measure and add a few extra feet I measured all the way back to uh, somewhere about in here on the back of the trailer and uh, then I added a few extra feet for the neck and all that measured out anyway I wound up ordering 36 feet I think I should only need about 33 but I wanted to allow a little bit extra uh, because you can always cut it off but you can't make it longer at least not easily so uh, anyway Order 36 feet, so that's where your main voltage drop is. Now, I'm not gonna worry about going from this tire or this brake across the trailer to that brake because that wire is only five foot long and it's only controlling one brake magnet over there. So is there a wire going across this axle here and there's a wire going across this axle here. So 14 gauge on that is fine because it's only controlling one brake magnet here, one brake magnet there, uh, and it's only a five foot length of wire. But what is not okay is the 14 gauge going here all the way to the front of the trailer up there, 30 something foot, and it's controlling four brake magnets. And that's where we're getting our voltage drop at. The other thing is they used uh, the 14 gauge wire for the trailer harness here as you can see all those wires right there are very small and uh so what i did was i ordered this harness here also ordered this from eTrailer.com. you can buy these on amazon as well uh and you can order a junction box for them also if you want to do that or you can order it with a junction box with the ring terminals already on there but what I wanted you to take a look at is the size of the wires here. You have the ground is a 10 gauge. Your auxiliary power is a 10 gauge. The blue wire here is a 12 gauge. Now this cable here that I ordered is 11 foot long because this being a gooseneck and sometimes you need to uh, drag your wire over the tailgate back here and plug in the bumper if your truck doesn't have a plug-in on the side so I wanted to make sure it was long enough most of them are eight foot long but if you look they do have some that are 10 or 11 foot long also I did not get the one with the junction box because the way that the neck up in here is uh, it'll be easier for me to solder it and make my connections right there like the factory did than it will be to try to mount a junction box there because I have a new battery breakaway box that I'm putting on as well and uh, so there's not a whole lot of room up here to put a junction box and it, it'll just be easier for me to solder it on this particular application uh, but if you uh, want to use the junction box you can uh, nothing wrong with doing it that way I'm just not doing it that way but what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this wire also I want to point out this wire here the uh the plug on it is pre-made on there it does not come apart this is a molded type plug so you don't have to mess with putting these wires on the screws and whatever but if you do break this off uh, all you have to do is just cut it off right here and then you can go back with your standard plug and wire it on so when you buy this it comes like this already assembled all you have to do is wire this up right here to your uh, trailer and then we're going to run this alongside the uh, factory seven-way cable so we're just going to cut the brake wires down here by the axle uh, and then we're going to pull this 10 gauge wire in 
tie that in, solder them, put heat shrink on it, run it all the way to the front of the trailer up here, and then it'll be tied into uh, this right here with the, uh, the ground and the blue wire. I would prefer that they would have used a 10 gauge wire. That's not the ground, that's the ground, that's auxiliary power hot. I would have preferred that they would have used a 10 gauge wire on the brake, but <clears throat> they didn't, and this is only, like I say, 11 foot, and I'll probably actually shorten it a little bit, I'm not sure. So you're still getting a whole lot of good by using the 10 gauge wire on your 30 foot run. Uh, you're taking out a lot of the voltage drop and getting the proper voltage back here. So hopefully that'll bring that voltage up about two volts from what I'm getting now from the eight. If I can get at least 10, that'll be pretty good. It ain't, it ain't great because I'm getting a voltage drop on the truck still, but it'll be a lot better than what it is because with eight volts, you're only getting about 60, 65% of what the actual braking power should be. Uh, so if we can get that up at 80 something percent, it's obviously a lot better. Uh, all these trucks, even the brand new trucks, they use a smaller wire on it as well. So if you actually want to get the 12 volts back here, you're probably going to have to do something with the truck too. Uh, but depends on your truck. You may not. You may have uh, you may have good power coming out of your truck. Just depends on the truck. But I can pretty much guarantee you, unless you got a really high end trailer, it probably has 14 gauge wire going to the electric brakes from the factory because that's what most of them use because it's the cheapest thing and uh, it's just not very good. So anyway, we're gonna set this up over here and uh, get started and try to run this wire down through here and get it up to the front and get everything all connected up and then we'll check it out. All right guys, I got everything installed. I got my new breakaway kit installed up here. I've got my new brake wire run through. I've got my new trailer pigtail plugged in. Uh, so the brake wire comes down here beside this one comes down and I just zip tied it right here uh, go through the trailer there and I'm gonna take you up under the bottom here and show you how I run it I had just enough I'm glad I got that extra extra length uh, and I'll show you why I just run it down right here you can see how the factory wires done and uh, how they just put the insulation back and and everything right there but I just followed this factory wire down until I got to right here and the factory wire goes through this cross member but the hole in that cross member is not big enough for this wire to go through so I just drooped it down and come back up on the other side and went back up I didn't feel like trying to get up in there and drill a hole and all that mess uh, because I got to go through three different ones of those they have been kind of hard to go through drill a hole and three of those laying up under here on your back like this uh, so I just looped it down and went up under all of them as you see and uh, come on to the back back here and then I put a little droop right here and I've got to get some more electrical tape I just droop this and soldered it in this is the factory 14 gauge wire here that's going over here I don't see a problem with that for that and uh, then I went back to the second axle back here and I left this got heat shrink on this I got to pull down and uh, heat it up to shrink it I left it so I could test the voltage and uh, cut my voltage drop in about half I'm getting about nine and a half volts there now instead of the eight that I was getting so it definitely helped out uh, for sure Anyway, uh, that definitely helped out. Uh, I'm still not quite getting the voltage I should be getting because as I say, I got a wire and issue with the truck. The wire on the truck's not big enough to get the voltage drop there. But a nine and a half volts is a lot better than eight. Uh, if you need a soldering gun, I'm gonna show you this one that I picked up on uh, Amazon because the last one I had burned up. Uh, it had some decent reviews. Not all of them were great. I'll let you uh, make that decision for yourself. But this is a Weller 550. It's got two little light bulbs. Those are not LED, uh, but they do work, do help out. It comes with a few different tips. I like this one here, this wide tip. Transfers a lot of heat when you're trying to solder this 10 gauge stuff. I got everything pretty much soldered with it, other than I had a few, uh, a few joints I had a little issue with on that 10 gauge wire. But uh, 
I used a torch on a couple of them just to speed things up. This may would have got it if I'd have held it on there long enough and kept messing with it. But anyway, uh, so far, so good. I can't really comment on how great it is because uh, this is the only project I've used it on. But it comes in a little case with some little tips and a uh, Allen wrench to change the tips. Three tips there. So anyway, I'll throw an affiliate link in the description if I think about it. If not, you see what it is and uh, can probably go check it out yourself. Uh, anyway, thought I'd throw that in there. And uh, so that's about it for this video. And uh, so thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you hadn't already. We'll see you guys in the next video.